If you're a homeowner, do you really need a chainsaw, either gas-powered or electric? What's the point in having one of these if you don't even have any trees to worry about? But what about natural disasters or weather-related damage such as hurricanes and tornadoes? Wouldn't you want to be prepared for something like that or am I just being too paranoid? In today's video, we look at this home light chainsaw and the problem is that it won't start and the reason is more than likely due to poor storage. Now, I've already fixed this chainsaw and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. And I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about why someone would want to fix something that they might never use. Chainsaws have always been seen as something you need if you're going to be a lumberjack or if you're going to be heating your home with wood, but are there other reasons to have one of these? So what's the main reason to have a chainsaw? To cut stuff up that's mostly made out of wood. But what if you don't have any wood around, then why have one of these? If you happen to live in a brownstone or a high-rise apartment in a concrete jungle downtown, then yes, I see absolutely no reason to get one of these at all, but what if you live someplace else? Now, a little backstory. When I was growing up, I lived in a neighborhood that had been around since the 40s or the 50s. That meant we had a sprawling backyard with a couple of trees. There were also two very large trees in the front. Now, I never saw my dad wielding a chainsaw ever, but at some point, a few of the larger branches did fall down due to some passing storms. So how did he deal with the fallen branches if he didn't have a chainsaw? Well, he dealt with it with what I can only explain as a very large meat cleaver. Now, did it work? You bet it did. But I'll let you know one thing. Not everyone can swing a large meat cleaver with some accuracy because if you didn't, you're going to end up with a few less fingers as I came very close to finding out. So was it necessary for him to have a chainsaw? Not really, and to be honest, he dealt with the situation the best he possibly could. But what if he had had a chainsaw, even a corded electric one? Could it have made his life any easier? I think so. So why buy a corded chainsaw? If you make it to your local hardware store and look at the prices for the corded version compared to the cheapest battery electric one, you'll find them to be one third the price of the battery one. And if you want to compare it to the cheapest gasoline powered one, it's about the same. The only difference is you're going to need a very long extension cord. Now, I'm not telling you to go and get a corded chainsaw and put your commercial gas saw up into storage, but for someone who doesn't rely on their saw to make money or for firewood, a low-cost option is perfect for them. But what happens when you don't have any power because the power lines are down after a storm? What then? Unfortunately, that means you'll need to decide on a battery or a gasoline-powered chainsaw. But wait, you might be saying that those aren't all the options. What about hand saws and axes? I'm going to be the first one to apologize to you. Swinging an axe is not easy, and if you're not in shape, well, you're going to get tired very quickly, and most would not be able to use it with any confidence or at least be used safely. That includes me. I might be able to swing an axe, but not for very long. I don't know if you see this, but what I see is a resurgence in finding efficient ways to live by reverting back to a simpler time. I'm not talking about mud homes and bartering, although I would call anyone who's doing that to live pretty freaking awesome. But what I'm talking about is moving out of their homes and out of their mortgages as well to live in either a tiny house or a converted van or a vehicle, all the while while finding ways to live with very little waste. The other way is to homestead on a piece of land, raising and growing their own food, and then relying on the sun, wind, or water to produce their own power. Just because they've grown tired of the life their parents lived, or for other personal reasons. To those of you who have the courage to do that, I envy you. So back to picking a chainsaw, if you find it difficult to get ethanol-free gasoline in your area and you're insistent on leaving fuel in your saws, I'd choose to use canned fuel from the hardware store. It won't go bad on the shelf before opening, and even in the saw, it won't harm the fuel system. The longest I've left canned fuel in a machine was three summers, and once I got it out, it still ran on the old fuel. Now this should solve most starting issues most people have with gas-powered saws. That seems to be one of the biggest reasons why most people avoid getting gas-powered saws in the first place. Now, they never complain about the saw the first time they use it, but the next time they get it out, it won't start. Then they'll start to complain about what kind of junk they bought, not realizing that they hadn't followed the storage instructions and causing a major issue in the fuel system. Now, if you feel as though I might be wrong and that buying a saw from a different brand that's two to three times more expensive will solve the problem, then I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. 
So here's a solution to that pesky storage issue that's really a care issue. Get yourself a battery chainsaw. Just remember the instructions that come with it are just a suggestion or a waste of your time. So that means you don't have to look at it at all. I mean, it's a giant carving knife powered by a battery you already use on your power drill or impact. You should already know how to use it, right? In all seriousness, I would ask that you at least look at it once and see if it's got anything to add to the knowledge that's already in your head. If it seems like it's not going to teach you something new, that must mean that you already know all the nuances of proper battery care, especially in the off-season. Just remember, batteries are like children. They don't like to be too hot or too cold, and they should never be left alone for a very long time. Otherwise, a group of well-spoken batteries will show up and take your battery's capacity to hold a charge away from you and leave you with just enough charge to pretend to do any real work. Oh, and don't forget how quiet it's going to be, too. Yes, the sound of a 500-watt electric motor spinning in a plastic housing that's slinging a chain on a metal bar is nowhere near as loud as a gas engine, but please don't tell me it's whisper quiet either. Once you've picked your poison, and by that I mean which type of chainsaw you want to deal with, take it out of the box and plug it in, or fill it up, or charge it up, and make sure it works. If you need to use it right then and there, go for it. Otherwise, check the manual on how it should be stored, and push it away somewhere where you're going to forget about it until that fateful day when you need to cut up a tree that's on your home, car, and hopefully not on someone you care about. But what are the chances of needing something like this? Now, I can't tell you that, but wouldn't it be nice to know that it's at the house, in the shed, or in the garage, just waiting to be used? Because just like when there's a blackout, everyone's going to go to the hardware store and pick up a generator. And if they're a real piece of work, they'll take a few extras so they can sell them at an inflated price. Trust me, it's happened before. Now, when it comes to generators, the difference is price and space. When talking about being prepared, most people will buy a generator, and it may never be used, but it's nice to know that it's there. The problem is the price for being prepared. For generators, they're typically several hundred dollars or more, but a corded electric chainsaw is a fraction of that price. I'm not going to get into money, but it's more likely that you'll be able to budget for a corded chainsaw versus a backup generator. Of course, if you've ever seen a full-size backup generator in person, it's not small. In fact, it's the size of a medium-sized coffee table. That sort of floor space in a garage is pretty valuable, and in a shed, it's basically on the level of hoarding. So for most people, choosing this level of preparedness is extreme. It costs more than my car payment, and it keeps me from parking that car in the garage. Talk about a hard sale. On the other side of being prepared, we have something that costs very little in comparison and takes up very little space. But how is that possible to take up no space? That's pretty easy. Hang the chainsaw on the wall. So getting a chainsaw should be very doable for most homeowners, and for me, it's an easy choice. So if it was an easy choice, why didn't I get one when I first got my home decades ago? Easy. Ignorance. When I got my first home, I didn't know how to take care of it. I didn't know about taking care of the house, let alone the yard. That's when I would see the older neighbors walking their yards, looking for fallen branches, soft spots in the ground, or areas where unwanted critters might be taking hold. I didn't know. I just thought these things would take care of themselves. Boy, was I wrong. I always thought the people I saw doing such things were just being weird until I realized why they were doing it. Now, if you're the type that never goes outside, even at home, these sorts of issues are not going to bother you, and your yard is going to look pretty wild and not keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. Just be careful because at some point, someone's going to notice your lack of effort and report you to the city. I know, right? They don't have anything else better to do except keep an eye on their own property value. Having a chainsaw ready is like keeping your lawnmower through the winter. It's just waiting for the opportunity to be used. Of course, the saw isn't going to be used more than once or twice a year, but at least you'll be ready. After a few years, I started to realize that I needed something to cut up the branches that were larger than a few inches to get rid of them, if not to at least make sure they'll fit inside the trash bins. So this is when things get a bit fuzzy for me. I don't recall the first chainsaw I ever got, which is really strange considering I can remember the first trimmer, blower, and mower I ever bought, but not this one. However, that's not the point. The point was I finally realized that I needed a chainsaw and got one. Now I may have to do some research and see if I can figure out how I got my first saw, seeing how it might be important in a later video.
Now, ever since I had a chainsaw ready and waiting, I've used it a few times to cut down some small trees that have come down because of a few storms, and even cut some 4x4 posts for a mailbox, and even done some fence repairs with them. Now, I'm not going to say that it's changed my life for the better, but it's certainly given me a few more options when it comes to doing my best Tim Allen impersonation. So in my opinion, I think every home should have some way to cut large limbs or any other large piece of wood around the home. These would be for emergency situations or even an issue of convenience. As for the type, only the homeowner can decide, and of course it depends on their level of need or even budget. But what if you decide you don't want one? Then that's your choice and I can respect it. Besides, who's going to make you change your mind? The last point I want to make is that chainsaws are not for everyone. They can be very dangerous and also a huge liability as well. They can be very loud to use and besides damaging your hearing, your eyes can also be damaged as well by flying debris. If you don't think you can use one safely, I'd leave it to a professional or at least someone you can trust. Don't worry, I do more tuning in the actual repair video, and this was a very abbreviated version of that video. Come to think of it, I'm not sure what happened to this saw. I might have to go digging around for it. So my question is, if you don't have a chainsaw, why don't you need one? To me, it makes sense to have even a cheap corded one hanging around, but then again, I also have several generators waiting in the wings just in case. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.